So the day has come. Everyone has asked me to do this video. This is the soil dirt aquarium setup. This is a gravel tank over here. Well, I should say it's a sand tank. And what we are doing is slowly moving like 90%. God, that thing is just loud. What we're slowly doing is changing like 90% of all the tanks upstairs to soil because it works so good for us. So without further ado, guys, I'm gonna go empty this tank and remove everything and we're gonna throw it up here and I'm gonna show you how I do my dirted tank aquarium setups. So here's the 20 tall. I just grabbed it from down there and the reason we're changing it out is because it was a sand only tank and uh, I'm obsessed with soil slash dirt tanks right now. So to start, um, you wanna get yourself some organic potting soil. And I know it's gonna be a million questions what brand do we get? Can we get the same brand you use? Uh, sure. Um, I've tried a bunch of different brands and they kind of, uh, the thing is with dirt, it's all different stuff. So just try it. It's not a huge deal. Don't overthink it. If you're wondering where I buy this particular brand, I get it from Menards. Uh, not a huge deal, but yeah. So what we're going to do is I literally will dump enough dirt in the tank to get around two inches of soil, two to three inches. And a lot of people are probably thinking, hey, you know, I've heard that you have to bake the dirt in your oven, or you have to put it outside in the sun to kill off stuff. Guys, I've done a lot of testing and I've had a lot of luck with just not doing anything. Um, if you want to bake the stuff at 300 degrees in your oven, that works too. So it's very simple. I don't do it, that's me though. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of trolls, but what I do is I start breaking it up and You know, I Some people would tell you to take out all the big particulate like the sticks and stuff but all I do is just kind of break this stuff up and What I'm gonna do now is add water because what we want to do is We want to mash we want to make sure all the dirt is absorbed with water. This is a huge deal you know, a lot of people set up dirt tanks and what they do is they put the, the dirt in there dry and then they put the sand in there dry. That's not what you want to do. This is probably the biggest, uh, this is the biggest deal when it comes to setting up a dirt tank because we want to make sure that the dirt is as waterlogged as possible because what happens is if you have trapped air in the dirt at a later date, you get these air pockets and they just destroy your tank because they float up, the, the, it's a nightmare, trust me. I've done a lot of testing doing this and uh, what you wanna do is sit here and squeeze this stuff for like five to 10 minutes. You wanna make sure all the, all the air is out and it is all, uh, how would you say it, absorbed with water. You want like a really watered down mud and um, some people ask, why don't you take the perlite out? And that's the little white things in the dirt. That's, it's just, I don't have the time, dude. Like I've, I've been there. It does look kind of ugly. Sometimes if you see it at a later date, but you know, a lot of the perlite kind of gets covered. I don't know. I just try to keep this as simple as possible, but this is the biggest deal guys. Set aside 10 minutes and just make sure all of this is just pushed out and smothered with water. I don't know, is that about the right depth? I might push it a little bit. I've I kind of been, I've been leaning on deeper beds of dirt, you know, deeper thicknesses because it's, it's more nutrients. Oh shoot, it's more nutrients for the plants. Do your due diligence with squishing out everything in this dirt. And sometimes what I'll do, if you really want to be patient with it, because with dirt tanks, your biggest, the biggest thing you got to worry about is ammonia. Sometimes what I'll do is, uh, if I get worried about ammonia, is I'll do this process of squeezing out all the water and absorbing, or squeezing out all the air and absorbing it with water. 
what I'll do is I'll let the dirt sit for a day or two because that way it's gonna le it's gonna gas off the ammonia. So I got it good and soaked and I'm confident this is good to go. So then what I do is I just come in here and I press this mud down just to the best of my ability. Just the entire tank. And this is about two and a half inches, maybe three. Depends who you talk to. Um, but yeah, this is all just, this is good and ready for sand. Uh, I would do it flat. Maybe you're doing a fancy aquascape. I don't know, I guess, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so right now, this is about the viscosity or absorption rate, is that a word? Uh, of what the mud should look like. So I guess we're ready for sand. And like I said, if you wanted to get super technical, you might be able to just like leave this for a day or two and let it gas off the ammonia because the ammonia is the number one concern. And there's only two ways. Holy smokes. <sighs> That's what sand. And we're gonna put the sand on top and I wanna preach to you guys as I put the sand on. There's only two ways to fix ammonia. Number one, water changes. Or number two, using plants. Because the biggest downfall to using dirt is the ammonia. The method I use to bay this ammonia issue is I use floating plants, invasive floating plants. That's without planning on getting rid of the ammonia, this dirt tank setup isn't gonna be all that great for you. And, sorry. What I'm doing here is I'm just sprinkling the sand on here. This isn't rocket science. Dry sand works a little better because it's it's less heavy. This is wet sand. Uh, I just literally grabbed from the same tank. What I did was I just uh, removed the sand, put dirt in there, and now I'm putting the sand over it again. But yeah, guys, without figuring out the ammonia issue, this dirt tank isn't gonna go well. I, I can just see tons of people messaging me, hey, uh, my fish are sick, or I have tons of algae in the tank because with ammonia, you're gonna get a lot of algae, just uh, cloudy water. Ammonia is a scary thing. So I just wanna preach. Right, guys, so I think that's about good on the sand. Uh, I do about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. And then what I do is I just come in here and I kinda just smooth it down and make it flat. And also another thing, the next step is to obviously fill the tank with water, right? Um, when it comes to filling with water and dirt tanks, you gotta be very careful because if we break this surface of sand with the water current coming out of your hose and you just let that dirt just start flinging everywhere, it's gonna be a nightmare, trust me. Ask me how I know. All right, so let's put this down in a spot where it goes. And P.S. These things are really heavy, full of wet mud, huh? Ironically. Ah. Oh. Alright, so I think we are ready for water. So when filling my dirt tanks, I always I always use a glass jar like this. It just sits on the bottom and it works perfect. And what you do is you put your hose in the glass jar. This isn't rocket science by any means, but, uh, and then what we're gonna do is just fill it with water. So you put the holes in there, and I always advise people to use clamps. I don't know, that's just how I do things. All right guys, so the tank is full, and the next step is to get some filtration in here. And what I like to use is a sponge filter. And I like to use a particular type of sponge filter. It's the dual hang on the side sponge filters. These, uh, there's a bunch of different brands of these. Um, this is kind of like been taking over the hobby. I know Hyger makes one. But the difference between these two sponge filters um, is this sponge filter, I mean, it works great as far as filtration, but what happens is the bubbles go to the surface and they pop, and it, this isn't good for your floating plants. Whereas this sponge filter, you can set this at the surface of the aquarium water, and it makes less current, and that's a lot better for these floating plants, because the floating plants are a big deal. 
So what I do is I just stick it in there like that and then find me the air line. Let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah, see, you can see this bad boy work. And what I usually try to do is for the floating plants is maybe kind of put it in the corner and then aim this thing maybe like this to kind of like um, give the floating plants as much space as possible because these floating plants, they want stagnant water. I love using that word, stagnant. All right, so now we're gonna grab some floating plants. I'm gonna grab a net here. And what I try to do with floaters is I kind of have like a mixture of all of them. I have regular duckweed, uh, giant duckweed, Salvinia minima, uh, there's some red root floaters in here, just all kinds of stuff. Dwarf water lettuce. As you can see, this tank is doing pretty well. So what I'll do, and this this is the same scenario here, guys. This is a dirt tank here, and what's happening is the floating plants are consuming the ammonia that's being given off in the dirt. We don't even know if there's ammonia in there, but the floating plants kind of helps uh, protect us, per se. And what I do is I just essentially just fill the tank with floaters. And you can tell this is a mixture of the Salvinia minima. Uh, lately, this plant's been doing the best in this household because uh, I don't know, it's just, it's crazy. And I would love to be able to send you guys like these mixture of floaters because uh, if you put like a bunch of types together, it's kind of like the ultimate mix. Because sometimes, you know, in tanks, maybe like only one type of floating plant likes your light, you know, because sometimes people have duckweed dye or else, you know, the, the, the water lettuce doesn't last, or, you know, and if you, if you use a trio of the, of the floating plants, one of them is probably going to survive. You can literally just grab them from any tank around here. They're all full of them. We're usually throwing the stuff away by bucket loads, but this has more of, the smaller stuff is just more of the regular duckweed. Sorry, I can't speak today. So yeah, and as you can see, this dual sponge filter, this surface sponge filter kind of leaves the floating plants alone a little bit. Whereas, you know, the, the regular sponge filters you can see in this tank over here, the snail tank, it kind of gets a popping sensation right there. And some floating plants will do great, but sometimes they don't. So actually, let's just steal from this tank. The snail tank is doing crazy good. Sometimes these floaters get like a weird algae on the bottom that kind of sucks. All right. And what I do is literally just try to, just try to fill it uh, maybe 50% of the way. And uh, what I always tell people with floating plants is it sort of depends on your water chemistry and what light you're using to see which floating plants are gonna do well. Sometimes the giant duckweed works. But this is the key to the ammonia. Or if you don't want to do this route, what you're going to have to do is a bunch of water changes. And you're probably asking, well, how many water changes? I would do a 50% water change once every three days to be safe. And you can test for ammonia, but ammonia is kind of a test, a tough one to test. You know, you know, if you use strips, it's just, it's really annoying I've found. So. Now what I do is I throw in some mutt guppies. Uh, essentially a fish you don't care a lot about. And this is kind of like the experiment phase. So I'm gonna look for some mutt guppies. I got a bunch over here. I'm gonna grab a couple of these guys. This house is full of mutt guppies. And this is kind of just to like keep a cycle in the tank you know, to give the tank a little bit of a bio load, but you don't want too much because you still, you still want to feed the filter, but. So then I throw these in there. And then now what happens is, you know, you would think that immediately um, you could start like playing around with this. The only thing I would do is start scaping this and adding plants. But as far as adding fish that you care about, you're, you gotta wait a couple of weeks. I would at least wait like two weeks, kind of watch the tank, make sure the guppies are doing well. 
essentially this is an experiment to see how these guppies do and obviously the more you plant this which we're going to add some plants those plants the more plants you add the more ammonia they might consume so also guys i forgot to mention that this sponge filter is a preceded established filter so this is kind of going to jump cycle jump start the cycle um now we're going to add some aquascape i kind of been saving this piece of wood here we're going to throw this bad boy in there and essentially like i was telling you guys um, if we can add plants, that's the best case scenario. Fill, fill the tank with plants because the plants, I don't know, should I do it this way or the other way? This opening's kind of sick, mm -hmm. but does it look weird? What do you think? I think it looks weird, but... Should I not do it? No, okay. you should. Oh, I should? Yeah. Okay, so flip it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Weird. If this thing floats, I'm gonna be pissed. It sucks putting driftwood into tanks like this. I don't know. I really, I don't love this piece of wood anymore because I cut the top too short and it just kind of looks funny. 20 minutes later. We're gonna go ahead and plant a pot of door sag here. I just happen to have it. Um, I don't have a ton of plants to throw in there. I wish I had more of them, but I gotta stop and get some. So, I mean, ideally you wanna put as many plants in there as possible, as soon as possible, because it does help soak up that ammonia. And guys, I know I've been preaching this whole time about like being patient, but it is such a big deal being patient. I'm trying to get this rock wool out of here. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna throw this plant in the front here. This isn't much of a plant, but it's something. And in a couple days, maybe I'll pick up some more plants when I get paid. Um, but yeah, so this is the tank. And I would say even I could maybe even take some of these floaters out just because you, you, you want a lot of them, but you want enough room for like, for them to grow and expand, you know, because that's what you want them to do is absorb that ammonia and kind of grow so yeah guys, this is how we do the dirt tank setup. It is nothing um, like scientific whatsoever. The key thing here is patience, you know. Sit there, watch the tank for two weeks, three weeks, uh, watch for algae, stuff it with as many plants as possible, and kind of just make sure the, the fish are doing well before you add uh, more expensive fish, more exotic fish. So let me know in the comments what you think.